kids. I'm so glad to see you. All year in Kids Life, you've been looking at the books of Psalms and Proverbs. And in the book of Proverbs, you found out that it's the wisdom book. And you know, there are a lot of really important life lessons to learn in our lives. One of the ways that we can learn those life lessons is by paying attention to the people that God puts in our life. By listening to what they say. People like your parents and your grandparents. People like your teachers. People like me. People like Pastor Jamo. Other people that God puts in your life as authority figures in your life. If you pay attention to what they say, you can learn to make some wise life decisions based on how they're leading you and how they're teaching you. But another way to learn some hard life lessons is by not listening to them and having to learn it through hard life experiences. That's not the easiest way to learn a life lesson, but sometimes it's how we learn them. I want to show you something. In my backyard, I have about six stones that look like this. They're near my air conditioner, and I put them by my air conditioner so that the chipmunks wouldn't run under my air conditioner, and then the dogs dig under the air conditioner and try to catch the chipmunks. I don't want chipmunks to have to be hiding under my air conditioner or get away from my dogs. But one of those stones got moved a couple of weeks ago by a heating and air guy. He moved it to block a drainage pipe. And I can't tell you how many times since then I have tripped over that stone. Now, if you were to walk in my backyard and I was going to lead you over in that direction, I would probably say to you, hey, watch out for that stone. It's easy to trip over and I don't want you to trip over it. You might listen to me and pay attention to where that stone is and step right over it and walk fine in my backyard. Or you might say, oh, don't worry about that, Miss Vicki. I'm not going to trip over that stone and not pay attention to where it is and not listen to what I'm saying and start walking and boom, trip over that stone. And you think, oh, man, she told me about that stone. I didn't listen. I didn't pay attention. And you had to learn that lesson the hard way. The book of Proverbs is full of wisdom life instruction for us. And the thing that we're going to talk about tonight as we look at the book of Proverbs is work and laziness. Now that might seem like that's not a very fair subject to talk about while we're sheltering in place at home and having to do schoolwork at home and a lot of your parents are having to work at home, I'm having to work at home. But it's an important life lesson to learn and if you can learn this life lesson now while you're young it will make a difference in your life even as you get older and as you become an adult i want you to listen to proverbs chapter 6 and we're going to begin in verse 9 and it says this how long will you stay in bed you slacker that means you lazy bones when will you get up from your sleep a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the arms to rest, and your poverty will come like a robber, your need like a bandit. What that verse is talking about is saying, if you just decide that you're going to be lazy, if you're going to stay in the bed, or if you're going to lay around on the couch, or you're going to just fold your arms and rest, or you're going to play video games all day long, or you're going to watch TV all day long, or if you're going to just do whatever you want to do all day long and not work, that you can bet on this. There will come a time where you will have things that you need that you won't have because you've been lazy. And also, you there will come a time where you might be poor because you've been lazy. That's what that verse is saying. That's what that verse is talking about. So Solomon says to us, hey, there's somebody that you can pay attention to that will help you to learn the importance of hard work. I want to show you something.
you're welcome for me helping you get that tune in your head that you won't be able to get it out of your head all night long. That song is about ants. You probably learned it when you were a teeny tiny little person, probably in preschool. And I don't know about you, but when I hear that song, I remember it and it goes over and over and over in my head. And Solomon says to us, pay attention to the ants if you want to know some wise life lessons about work. I don't think Solomon is meaning that video, the ant marching song. So I think we need to look and see what Solomon says in the book of Proverbs about ants. So listen to these verses. Go to the ant, you slacker, I mean you lazy bones. Observe its ways and become wise. Without leader, administrator, or ruler, it prepares its provisions in summer. It gathers its food during harvest. Whoa, that sounds like that's some pretty major life lessons to learn from something that's so teeny tiny. I went looking for some ants today and I couldn't find any ants today. I guess that means my exterminator is earning his money. But I want to look at you, talk with you about some of the facts that I found out about ants. Here's the first one. They each have six legs and two stomachs. Now they're pretty little, aren't they? To have two stomachs. Some ants can spit acid at their enemies. That's not even the fire ants, I don't think. They have amazing strength. They can lift objects that weigh 50 to 100 times their own weight. That's a lot of weight that they can lift. That's like you lifting a car. Could you do it? I couldn't. For every person in the world, there are over 1 million ants. So there are plenty of them for us to look at to find out some of these life lessons about work. Some ants can swim, and most ants can survive 24 hours underwater. When an ant finds food, it leaves a trail of scent so his friends can find it too. So let's talk about some of these principles of work that Solomon lays out for us that we'll talk about the ant. So the first thing he says is go to the ant, you slacker, observe its ways and become wise. So what he's saying is there really are some important things that you can find out from an ant. Look at them, pay attention to them, watch what they do, and you'll become wise. Then he says, it, without leader, administrator, or ruler, it prepares its provisions in summer. It gathers its food during the harvest. It says they don't have a boss that tells them what to do. They don't have somebody looking over their shoulder to make sure they're doing their work. They do it. And it says that they prepare ahead of time, that they gather their food so that in the winter they have plenty of food. They think ahead and they plan ahead so they're not scrambling at the last minute. What am I going to eat or what am I going to have for the winter time? Because they've already plan planned in advance to do that. Those are some really important lessons. But you know what? An ant is an important thing to look at, obviously. Solomon tells us, pay attention to the ants. Look how they work and then take some lessons from them. But we have a greater example than an ant. And that is, we have the example of Jesus. Do you know if we take those things, we look at it, Jesus was a very hard worker. He was. He worked day and night. In fact, he usually had to go away in the night to pray because he had people pressing on him all the time. He was healing people. He was teaching people. He was traveling because he had to walk most places that he went. So he had to travel to get to different places. He was working hard. Jesus was a very, very hard worker. He had a hard working attitude. And do you remember what his dad did? First of all, his dad, his earthly dad was Joseph, right? Do you remember what Joseph's job was? Yeah. Joseph was a carpenter, 
that was hard work too. He didn't have all the power tools that carpenters have now. He had to do everything by hand. And I would imagine that Jesus started learning from Joseph at a very young age, the trade of carpentry. And he was working hard at a very young age. But once Jesus became an adult, and once Jesus began his earthly ministry when he was 30 years old, just three years before he was gonna die on the cross for us, he was a hard worker. He would have to find some time to be alone because people wanted to be with him all the time. I think probably his disciples learned how to work hard too. I wonder about this for you. Are you a hard worker? When it comes to your schoolwork, are you a hard worker? When it comes to your chores at home, are you a hard worker? Do you do the very best that you can? You know, the Bible talks about how we should be doing the very best we can because we're really not doing it other, for other people. We're really doing it for God. That's an important principle to learn. And if we start thinking this work that I'm doing, whether you are taking out the trash or whether you're clearing the table or whether you're making your bed or whether you're putting your clothes away or whether you're feeding the dogs or the cats or you're doing your schoolwork online, whatever that you're doing, if you'll remember, hey, the Bible says that I should do whatever I do for the glory of God because I'm really working for him, not for other people. But another principle, the same kind of life principle that, that the Proverbs talks about for an ant, that they have no boss, they have no leader, but they still do their work. Jesus had no boss either. He had his heavenly father and he spent a lot of time in communication with him. He spent a lot of time praying and talking to God so that he understood God's heart. So he knew what God wanted from him. But I guarantee you that God wasn't having to say to him when, when Jesus would come to him in prayer. Now, son, I told you that I want you to go do this because Jesus knew his father's heart and so he wanted to be obedient to his father and so he did what he knew his father would want him to do even though his father wasn't forcing him or standing over his shoulder and watching him. You know, I hope that when you think about your work, whether you're talking about schoolwork or chores, or maybe you have even some kind of little yard job or something like that, I hope that when you're thinking about your work, you don't wait for someone to tell you what to do. I hope that you'll just do what you know you're supposed to do without somebody standing over you telling you what to do. That's an important, important life lesson when it comes to work. Do you know the heart of your parent? Do you know what your parents expect of you? Do you know what your teachers expect of you? Are you willing to do what they expect you or do you, of you? Or do you just wait until somebody tells you and tells you and tells you and tells you? You know... I think if we're going to follow the example of the ant, but more importantly, follow the example of Jesus, we won't wait for a boss to tell us what to do. We'll just do what we're supposed to do because it's the right thing. Another thing that Solomon said about ants, and we can see this in Jesus's life too, is they plan ahead. Planning ahead sometimes comes easy for some kind of people and it comes hard for some kind of people. I don't know about you, I like to plan ahead. I like to keep a schedule, I like to keep a list. Maybe I'm a little even weird about that. But planning ahead, whether you do it the way I do it or not, planning ahead is an important, important principle. Because if you want to have things later, you've got to plan ahead. If you want to have a good reputation, You've got to plan ahead by doing your work without being told. If you want to someday have a good job, 
You've got to work hard now and learn those principles now so that later on you will have already developed those work principles in your life and you'll be a good employee or you'll even be a good boss for somebody someday. Jesus looked ahead. He knew that he wasn't going to have forever to be able to do the things on earth that he wanted to do. He knew his time was limited because he knew that he came to die on the cross to pay for our sins. That was hard work, by the way. Dying on the cross to pay for our sins, that was hard work. It was brutal. But he did it anyway because he loves us. But he didn't just say, oh, well, you know what? The Bible says, fold your hands and rest or not get out of the bed. Jesus didn't do that at all. Jesus was planning ahead to do the work that the Father had sent him to do. He knew he didn't have forever to do it. And so he was doing the work, looking ahead, looking forward to doing what the cross was calling him, what he was going to do on the cross so that we could come to know him. He planned ahead to do that work that the Father had sent him to do so that we could know him personally, so we could have a relationship with him, so our sins could be forgiven, so that we could have new life, so that we could have eternal life with him. What about you? Do you plan now for your future? You say, what? I'm only six, Miss Vicky, or I'm only 11, Miss Vicky. I have lots of time. No, because if you learn these important principles about work versus laziness, now while you're six or now while you're 11, it will make a difference in your life in the long run. Don't forget what we read in verse 9. How long will you stay in bed, you slacker? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms to rest, and your poverty will come like a robber, your need like a bandit. Think about what Jesus did. Think about the ants. Work hard. Work even though you don't have somebody looking over your shoulder. Do what you're supposed to do and plan ahead in your work. I know that you're almost out of school. I know that you're not going back to school this year, but you're still doing schoolwork right now. But guys and girls, these principles aren't just about schoolwork. They're about any kind of work you have. Do it the very best you can. Plan ahead, do it without someone telling you to do it, and work hard at everything you do. Let me pray. God, would you help us to be hard workers? God, would you help us to learn these life lessons from Proverbs? God, would you help us to pay attention to how Jesus lived his life and help us to follow his example? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I love you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you again in person.